Each way betting is an amazingly popular way of betting on horse racing. Every day thousands of people double down their stake, not only betting on their chosen horse to win the race, but also betting on their horse to land in some of the runner-up positions as well. However, although it's a super exciting side bet, which gives you more opportunity and more chances of having a winning bet, Still, most punters never make a penny from the bookmakers betting over the long run. So in this two-part video series, this being part number one, which I've taken from my exclusive content over on my Patreon account, which I'll leave a link to down below in the description if you want to get access to more of my exclusive content. That link will be down below in the description. I've taken that from my Patreon and I'm going to give it to you guys for free here on YouTube. It's going to cover my each way betting strategy and it will explain to you exactly how you can use my each way betting strategy to take advantage of the bookmakers and make a lot of cash every single year. Okay, so on this first slide here, I want to start by explaining what places are and what extra places are and the inception and where these, these two things come from, places and extra places. Now, I appreciate this might sound a little bit basic and it might all be a bit basic, this kind of stuff, for quite a few people. Um, but I do recommend watching all these videos to just to give you that full base and that full understanding of everything which is in this, this Place Market Master series. And you never know, you might find something that you didn't actually know as well. So this part of the series is basically explaining the inception of places and extra places. So where did places come from and where did extra places come from on top of the places in the first place? Well, if you picture an old-fashioned bookmaker, let's say a bookmaker from the 1850s or something like that, taking bets off loads of different people. Now, back in the day, that was probably fun, betting on a single horse to win a horse race. And obviously, the winner would get a nice nice reward and he would feel really good about himself. But as time's gone on, and we're now obviously in 2022, people's attention span, short, span is shorter and people want to feel more engaged with whatever they're doing. So the bookmaker knows this as well and they come up with a concept of having the punter, the gambler, win more often and therefore become more engaged with the platform. So the bookmaker come up with a concept in which the customer will become more engaged with the bookmaker's platform and therefore bet more often with them and therefore the bookmaker ultimately would make more money. So they come up with a concept of places and the way in which it would work is the customer would be able to double down the stake in which they were using. So half the stake, the first part of the stake would just be the normal part of the bet on the horse to win the race. And the other half of the stake would be on the horse landing in a runner up position or positions which were specified by the bookmaker. So the bookmaker and obviously everyone who would work for the bookmaker would have realized that this was a good idea. You know, instead of having someone just bet on the winner of a race, you could now have a person bet on the winner of the race double down their stake and bet on runner-up positions which the bookmaker would specify so it would increase the engagement it would keep up keep people engaged with the bookmaker's platform and obviously that's what the bookmaker wants because if people keep betting the bookmaker keeps making money and obviously if, if there's someone just betting at odds of three to one all the time which is four in decimals they're only going to win about 25 and 100 times on average and it's likely the person might get disengaged with the product so this idea from the bookmaker Everyone sort of agreed with this, this runner-up positions where, you, where the person would win and get a return on some of their stake. But the bookmaker obviously encountered a problem, that being how do we work out the true odds of a horse landing in a certain position in the race so that we can offer a non-value price shorter than the true odds. So in other words, if, if the true odds were worked out at like 2.2 for a horse landing in a runner-up position, the, the bookmaker would obviously just be able to offer 1.9 to the customer and therefore the bookmaker would make money over the long term. So that was the main priority for the bookmaker at this point, working at the true odds so they can offer a shorter price than what the true price is. In a similar sort of sense, well, exactly the same sort of sense to the way in which you do, to the way in which they do um, on the winner of the race, the win market. Now bookmakers would have come to the conclusion on this that working at the true odds or the probability of a horse landing in a specific place or places and not or not the winning place is difficult and it's highly variable and it changes with every single race so it's not super easy and it's not it's much more harder to do that than working out the odds or the implied probability for the, for a horse winning the race 
So bookmakers would have come to the conclusion that it's difficult to work this kind of thing out. It's highly variable, it changes on a race by race basis. So luckily for us, the bookmakers decided to be lazy in the way in which they price up the places that they're paying out on. The, the solution was to slap either a quarter or to slap a fifth on their initial back odds and that would derive the odds for a horse landing in a place. So that would give you the place odds. And you can see with this red arrow here, this is denoting on, on Skybet, I think it is, uh, each way one fifth of the back odds for the first four places. So that's a prime example of that information being displayed on a bookmaker's website. So it's either a quarter or a fifth of the back odds on any runner to work out the place odds. Now, for example, in a 12 runner race, the bookmaker's standard would be to pay it on three places. So the first place, the second place, and the third, third place. Now the first place, although it's the winning position, is also classed as a place as well. And they would pay out a quarter back odds on each runner. And all the bookmakers kind of stick to that blueprint uh, on this kind of race with this amount of runners, which we're going to dive into a little bit later on. Um, so just to break it down, let's say a, a horse is priced up at 4.0, Bob Ollinger priced up at 4.0. The bookmaker's formula for working out the place odds for that horse is very simple. They simply do the odds, so 4 minus 1, which is 3, and then they divide that number by the fractional payout. So in this case, it's, um, it's 4, so it's 3 divided by 4 in this case. And if it was a fifth, it would be 3 divided by 5. But it's 3 divided by 4 because it's a quarter. And that's equals 0.75. And then once they've got that number, they just add one to the total and that equals 1.75. And that right there is how the bookmaker prices up the place odds for, for Bob Ollinger, who's priced his back odds of 4.0. So you can see they're not modeling it. They're not using loads of sophisticated data to work out what price the horse really has of landing in a, in a place. They're just simply doing an arbitrary um, calculation like that and sort of saying that'll, that'll sort of do. We know our, 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 um, our audience isn't the most intelligent group of people anyway, and it will probably be fine because the back odds for the win are value, and we know they're not value. So that's how they do it, and that's a big part of why you can make a profit from extra places, because that they price up uh, places and extra places uh, in a, a poor way, a lazy way of doing it. Um, so if a customer wants to go £10 each way on the runner Bob Ollinger at a price of 4.0, part one of the bet will be £10 on the horse winning at odds of four, like we just touched on. And then if they click a, a little box on the bet, an each way box, they can double down their stake. So that means part two of their bet, the second portion of the bet, the second £10 of the bet is going to be on the horse landing in a place that the bookmaker specifies, so that'll either be first, second or third in this example in a race with 12 runners. And that'll be at the odds of 1.75 based on the calculation that I just showed you. So everyone was happy with this concept overall. You know, the bookmakers were happy because it kept engagement up with their audience. You know, their audience were winning more often even though they weren't making a profit because the bookmaker was making the profit and making more money. So the customers were happy because they felt like they were winning more and a big part of recreational gambling is the rush of winning and that psychological uh, rush you get from being right, saying something's going to happen, someone's going to win, and then it does. That's really what recreational gambling is about. It isn't really about making money. That's kind of um, like a dark secret of the betting industry, I feel. That's more about the rush of winning for recreational gamblers as opposed to the the skill of making money from betting and bookmakers know this that's why they that's why they did this the place is to keep people engaged keep people having more wins and therefore obviously their profits went up in the meantime as well so everyone was ultimately happy with um with this setup now the next thing to tie into that is extra places now extra places are pretty much the same as places they're just derived from places they're the exact same thing they work in exactly the same way as places you just get in more places essentially so to explain that a little bit better you know bet365 are known for having the best odds across all the different bookmakers they offer the best prices and they out compete like coral and skybet and rat labrokes and betfred and all the big bookmaking names they out compete them with their prices and therefore because they're doing that that sucks in quite a lot of custom and that obviously is good for Bet365 and that helps them make more money. But 
let's say Coral see what Bet365 are doing. Coral see that Bet365 are offering at all these enticing prices as close to the true price as you can probably get with a bookmaker. So Coral spot this and they, they think, how can we compete with this? You know, Bet365 are outdoing us with the odds. How can we compete with Bet365? So the way in which Coral can compete and when, the way in which they come up with was to just look at the place market and see that Bet365 were paying it on three places on this 12 runner race, this high profile 12 runner race, let's say. And Coral could just say, okay, let's um, let's offer four places instead of three places. And that hopefully will suck in some of the custom back to our website and take that from Bet365 because we're offering a more enticing uh, opportunity for punters and customers of, of bookmakers and they have more chances of winning and that is ultimately what, what it's all about giving the customer the rush of winning and from a bookmaker's perspective and let's say sky bear notice that coral's doing this so sky offer that fourth place as well so you've got coral and sky both offer, offering an extra place on top of bet 365's standard amount of places but then bet 365 might actually notice that coral and sky are doing this and they might offer out Two extra places, so they might offer out first, second and third to the standard and then fourth and fifth. So two extra places on top of the standard and that will suck custom back to Bet365. So ultimately with extra places, it's just the bookmakers all competing amongst each other to try and draw as many eyeballs and as many customers to their platform over the competition. And that is a big part of, of the advantage and a big part of how you can make a profit from the extra place strategy. It's, uh, it's preying on the fact that bookmakers are greedy and they're all competing against each other so you can take advantage of that aspect. It also takes advantage of the fact that bookmakers price up the, the place odds in a, in a poor way as, as we've seen earlier. They just have an arbitrary formula, they apply to the back odds and hope that works. And for most people that does work, recreational customers aren't a super smart group of people for the most part. But if you apply a little bit of logic, a little bit of maths to what you're doing, it's pretty easy to make a profit from doing all of this. So next up, I'm going to talk to you about how targeting the extra play strategy works. Now, targeting the extra play strategy, the ultimate objective is to try to get a free bet on the extra place position that's offered out by the bookmaker. That is the ultimate target with doing this strategy. So in the example earlier, if there's 12 runners in a race, every position except the extra place position which would be four would be break even you'd win no money and lose no money but if the horse landed in the fourth place the fourth position you'd have a nice free bet and a nice chunk of money waiting for you in that position that's the ultimate goal and the ultimate objective with this strategy now the reality is bookmakers aren't in the business of giving you value and they don't want to give you value because if they, if they allowed you to always create a free bet on their extra place position they would very quickly lose money on you as a customer so obviously that's not in the bookmakers uh, repertoire they don't want to be giving you value they don't want you to be having free bets on the extra place position and they're going to do everything they can to not allow you to do that of course so the realistic goal is to get as close as you can to a free bet on the extra place position in every single race that you target so in some races you'll be able to get really close to a free bet amount on the extra place position. In other races, you won't be able to get quite as close to a free bet on that on that race. But the goal is, the realistic goal is to get as close as, as possible to a free bet on the extra place position. And that's what this, this series is all about, showing you where, you know, what matches to take, where's going to give you profit over the long term, what matches to avoid and things like that. So you don't just blow your bank and you, you, you know this is all about helping you make as much money as you can from doing this strategy and from targeting the extra place. So using the example earlier, Bet365 in a 12 runner race are paying out on the standard three places and they're paying out on a quarter of the back odds. Whatever the runner's back odds are, they're paying out on a quarter of the back odds for the first three places. As we said, Coral in the same race, 12 runner race, they're actually offering out the first four places. So you can see at the bottom there, that's one extra place and they're offering a fifth of the payout as opposed to a fourth with Bet365. But the main thing is they're offering that one extra place. Now this, this uh, slide I've got here is basically it denotes only backing each way with a bookmaker. So this would be uh, from the recreational gambling perspective. And you can see I've put one to nine across the screen here in this table. Now these represent the position 
within the race. So one represents the winner, nine represents the, the last place horse and the loser. And you can see we're looking at the same race, 12 on a race, three places, a, a fifth pay at the back odds. And you see I put this key down at the bottom here. So a green tick would represent, represent a no risk uh, position that you're in with the bookmaker if you place a bet and um, the bet wins. Um, and that's shown there on the uh, on the table. So those three, three green ticks right there, uh, if, if obviously if your horse lands in those positions, you're going to have a no risk situation. So you're not going to be risking or losing any of your money. But the problem is, from a recreational gambling perspective, each of the remaining places, in this case position four to position nine, is a risk position. So you're risking your money if a horse lands in four to nine. And that's obviously the essence of betting with a bookmaker and, and punting. You're essentially taking open-ended risk, and that open-ended risk is just made up and determined by whatever the bookmaker wants it to, wants it to be, and the customer just bets into it. So the match betting approach, the value approach, and the approach that makes money over the long term. Again, looking at the same race here, 12 runner race, first four places, obviously got the extra place, and a fifth payout on the back odds of each of the runners. Same thing again, positions one through nine. Now with the match betting approach, the no risk or small risk position is across all the, all the places. So position one through to position nine, excluding position four, which is the extra place in, in this example, is a no risk. You're not risking any money if the horse lands in any of those positions, or you might be risking a small amount of money. But it's not like in the previous strategy, the recreational gambling strategy, where you're taking that open-ended risk on quite a large chunk of positions. You might have a small risk on most of the positions, um, if at all a risk uh, in those positions. If the horse lands in the extra place, which is fourth in this example, that's where you hit the nice profit, as denoted by that little bag of money right there. Okay, so in this next video, I want to explain exactly how the extra place matcher works on Odds Monkey. Um, so the extra place matcher, if you're not familiar, I'm sure you are, is basically how we, we, we determine where the odds are, what the best percentage match is to get on with our extra places, and all that kind of stuff. It just cuts out the middleman. Theoretically, you don't even need... This piece of software, you could do all this manually, but it would take you a lot of time and it would be a lot of effort. And it's just much, much easier to use some form of extra place matcher. Um, it's on Odds Monkey. If you want to check out Odds Monkey for free, help me out and use my link. I'll leave it dotted around somewhere. So, you know, feel free to do that. It does really help me out if you haven't already used my link. Much appreciated if you do that. Um, but basically, this is the extra place matcher. So, as I just said, it just pulls up all the odds from the bookmakers website. All the odds from the, the win lay on the betting exchange and all the odds from the place lay on the betting exchange as well. So with this strategy, as you probably know, um, it, it works by placing three different bets. The win and each way back bet with a bookmaker, the win lay bet with the betting exchange and then the place lay bet also with the betting exchange. So the first portion of, of doing this, part one of three, the back bet, each way back bet with the bookmaker, anything to do that with that is all highlighted in blue on the extra place matcher. So you can see here the each way stake is £10. The bookmaker is bet365. The runner to the left of that that you're going to be backing each way is, in this case, Diamond Cottage. The terms, the TRM, this section here, represents is it a fifth or is it a quarter of the back odds? So the back odds are eight. It's a fifth of the back odds to determine the place odds. And next to that, you can see the place odds, a fifth of the back odds, eight. And that is 2.4. Now, the second box here is the second part of the bet, the win, lay portion of the bet. So you can see um, this is where we're going to be laying off the win portion of the bet. So we're back in winning each way with a bookmaker. The first portion is betting on the horse to win, like I said. This portion here, the, the dirt pink section, the middle part, the extra place matcher, tells you everything you need to do to lay the win. So you back the win with the first portion of the bet. Then you would lay the win on, on the bet and exchange to, to cover that first portion of the bet. The third portion of the bet here, the light pink, is the place lay bet where you're laying the places on the exchange. And because the bookmaker is paying it on one additional place on top of standard, the bet and exchange's place market will cover one place less. So I'll show you exactly what I mean. I'll break this down a little bit clearer. So I'll open up Bet365 and I'll open out um, Bet for as well in both of these markets. So what you would do, you would place an each way back bet on what the extra place match was telling you. 
So you can see here, this is Diamond Cottage. It's telling us to place a 10 pounds each way back bet on Diamond Cottage. So you would find Diamond Cottage, find the odds. So it's, it's uh, seven to one, which is eight in decimals. You click on that, and I'm not logged in at the minute, but basically you would click on that, pop your each way stake in, which would be 10 pounds in this case. You could change that as well, depending on what you want to do. You could use 20, you could use 30, you know, you could use 40. And every time you click enter on the keyboard, that will update all the, the numbers within this row. But we're just going to use it as 10, for example. So you'd find the runner, click on the runner, enter your stake, £10. Click the each way box on the bookmaker's site, and that would double down your stake. So if you're using a £10 stake, the total stake will be £20 as you're betting part one on the horse to win, and then part two on the horse to land in the places which are specified by the bookmaker on their website. So it's usually, and it's usually pretty clear to determine what those places are that the bookmaker's paying out on. You can see here, uh, Bet365 is paying out on four places at a fifth of the back odds. So you place your win in each way back bet with a bookmaker, and then that is this portion of the extra place match completed. You then move on to the second portion, the win layer, and you'd use the stake that the extra place matcher has provided you with, so this stake right here, £9.55 in my case, at these odds, 8.4, on, on the exchange, you would find the runner, Diamond Cottage, you would click the lay box, you can see the odds are 8.4, you'd pop your stake in, and you would check the liability, which is displayed here, £70.67, matches up with the liability displayed here. Can be a few P out sometimes, not sure why, I think there's something wrong slightly with a calculation somewhere, either on Betfair or on here, but you can see those numbers are super, super close, they're within 3p of each other, so you know that's that's right. And then you would place that bet there, and that is laying the win. So you bet on the win with a bookmaker on the first portion of the bookmaker's bet. You're then laying the win on, on the exchange as well. So you've covered the win with a bookmaker, and you've laid the win on the exchange. And then the third portion of the extra place matcher, the lighter pink section, the place lay section, you're doing the same thing again. So using the stake, what's provided here, £9.2. At odds of 2.68 uh, on this runner here you can see the odds have changed you can just update the odds so the, the odds 2.8 you can update them uh, to match on there so put 2.8 in there and then you can use the new stake what's provided to you on the extra place matcher which is £8.63 now in my case at the new odds what are available they've just changed it again there but you get you get the idea of what I'm saying and you would check the liability, 1553 and 1554, which is pretty much the same. And then you would place that bet as well. But you can see here, you're, you're only laying the first three positions. So you're back in winning each way with a bookmaker, and each way is covering four places because they're offering an extra place. You're laying the horse to win on the exchange, and you're laying the horse to place on the exchange, but you're laying the standard amount of places, which is free. So that fourth position, if that fourth position hits for you, you're going to make this profit right here because it isn't covered. Um, it's not covered by the betting exchange, but it is covered by the bookmaker, and that's where the value is coming from. So you'd make that profit there, the horse finished in fourth. But if it finished in any other position, you would take this loss right here in the qualifying loss uh, column right there. And I'm going to get into ratings and qualifying losses and what matches are positive over the long term and what what. what and what matches a negative over the long term in just a little bit. And we'll get into this in a, in a bit more detail in a bit, as well as like the rating and the implied odds as well. So yeah, that is basically how the extra place matcher works. So the next part of this series is probably going to be the least engaging part of the series, to be completely honest with you. And the part of the series which people kind of skip over a little bit. Um, but in actuality, it's probably the most important part of it and the, the part which separates people who go, extra places are rubbish, this strategy doesn't work, I'm going to just jack it in. It's not for me, uh, to the people who do make money from running a, an extra place strategy and a value each way strategy. Um, so with this, uh, you must be patient and get rich slow is ultimately what this is all about. Extra places and, and targeting the extra place is a low strike rate strategy. Now, if, whether you want to use my extra place strategy, somebody else's or your own, you're pretty much always going to find this, that you're going to have a low strike rate. So that means you're going to lose very often and you're going to win very little. 
and that can be hard to deal with. Now, I find that you'll probably have between a 10 and a 20% strike rate, so you're gonna be losing quite a lot, as I just said. If you're doing 100 races, you're winning between 10 and 20 times on average, isn't a great deal, and you need to be able to accept that. You need to be able to accept that right now, to be completely honest with you, because that's not gonna mystically, magically change you're gonna win very little, but when you do win, you're gonna have a big profit, and it's gonna wipe out all the smaller losses you're taking along the way, and it's gonna leave you with a nice chunk of money left over, and that's gonna repeat over and over again. But in the short term, you're gonna lose quite a lot, quite frequently, and obviously, you, there are only gonna be small losses in relation to your stake, but you need to be able to handle that, you need to be able to, um, to deal with that the best that you can. Remember, that is hard because psychologically, we as humans love the feeling of being right. We love the feeling of winning, being right, being right about what we're saying, looking good. All these psychological biases we have means that we want to be right all the time. And that's exactly why where places and extra places are coming from because bookmakers know that people want to be right and people want to win and feel good about themselves. And it's just a, you know, it's a good marketing trick from the bookmaker's perspective. But, you know, you're just going to flip that on its head. Most recreational customers just want to win all the time and end up making no money over the long term, having a lucky win now and again, but just losing more money from the losing bets than they win from the winning bets. But when you're doing this extra play strategy, you're going to lose quite often, but you're going to win way more from your winning bets than you lose from your losing bets. So it's like a value betting strategy. You're not really taking crazy amounts of open-ended risk like a, a recreational gambler because I've worked out all the data, I've been through this loads and loads of times, I know that it works, I know what matches are positive over the long term, it's just important to not cut out too early. If it's going against you, if you've gone on a 20 extra place losing streak, the temptation could be to just say, this doesn't work, I'm not doing this anymore, this loses money. But in reality, that's all part of the game, you're going to lose money continuously for quite a long period of time. On average, every you know, you're going to win 10 to 20% of the time, so 10 10 to 20 times in every 100 extra places you do is a good average that you'll probably expect to get. So you've got to be able to deal with that, and ultimately that is that is the big secret with extra places, to be completely honest with you. They're not particularly complicated. There's not really that much to them. I'm going to dive into it in a little bit, how, how easy it actually is to do this. It's just a part of seeing through that negativity and be, being able to handle that that constant feeling of, feeling of being a failure and losing all the time but when you do eventually win you're going to have a nice profit and to try and look at it from a, a long longer term perspective and really think about why you're doing this so think about okay i'm starting them up for this point i'm going to be ending them up for this point i'm going to win and lose in between but i'm going to have more money over here at the end of the month than what i had at the start of the month and everything in between is just it is what it is i don't care i'm not going to get sucked into the rush of winning and the rush of being right I'm here to make money, and this is how I'm going to do it. I'm going to have to ride this spell of variance, ride these long losing streaks, and then ultimately make a nice profit at the end of each and every month. So please don't get sucked into this, this gambling-like tendencies people tend to get st stuck into. I've seen loads of message boards and things. Well, not loads of them. A few message boards and forums with people running these kind of strategies, and they, they exhibit, I think, they kind of start exhibiting gambling-like tendencies for some of the people they're saying, okay, I've had a really bad day and I've lost on all these races, so I've sort of doubled down everything, I've bet everything on this last race and this last runner, and he's going to make me a profit and put me in a large profit at the end of the day if it hits. That perspective and that outlook is going to cost you money over the long term. This is a long, drawn-out process. It isn't overly exciting, to be completely honest with you, but at the end of the month, if you stay strict to the rules, you don't bend the rules, you don't get sucked in, you don't start doubling down your stakes and things like that. You're going to be completely fine and you're going to have a nice profit at the end of each and every month. So next up, we're going to talk about rating and qualifying loss. So we're really starting to get into the bulk of what this Place Market Master Series is all about. So rating and qualifying loss are in these uh, one, in two of these four boxes towards the right-hand side of the extra place matcher. So the rating is the column which is highlighted in blue with the blue arrows, as you can see there. And the qualifying loss is highlighted in the qual loss column, which is the, um, the second one from the right. Now the rating on the top runner is 88.56%. And the rating, that's not the rating, the qualifying loss on the top runner is minus £2.29. Now basically, 
if the rating was 100%, if you had a 100% rating, the qualifying loss over here would be at zero. You wouldn't have a qualifying loss. But the, um, and the extra place profit, sorry, it would be uh, the, the maximum that you could get, which in this case would be a £30 profit. And of course, on the flip side of that, if you had a rating, what was about 60% or something like that, the extra place profit would be smaller and the qualifying loss would be higher as well. So basically, in layman's terms, a 100% match or as close to 100% match as you can is very good value for you and bad value for the bookmaker. But like a 60%, 70% match, even lower than that, is very bad value for you, for you and very good value for the bookmaker generally. So if we look at this runner that I've, um, that I've took at the top here, you can see this runner's called Prism, as you can see in this screenshot from the extra place matcher. The back odds on the runner are 11. The place odds are free, and that's because the terms are a fifth. And you can see I've uh, written them in text next to that to make it a bit clearer as well. So the back odds are 11, as displayed there. Place odds free, because the bookmaker is doing a fifth of 11 for the place odds, and that, that equals free, based on the calculation that they all use for, for getting those place odds. Now, I've got a table here which shows the qualifying loss and the potential profit on different ratings that you can take uh, when, you, when you're getting on, getting on these extra places. So as I showed you just then, the rating column in the extra place matcher, which was in blue, shows you the percentage match that you have. Now, an 80% match rating using a £10 each way stake, so a £20 total stake, your qualifying loss would be £4. So an 80% match, £10 each way stake, your qualifying loss would be £4. Whereas your potential profit of the horse landed in the extra place position, being paid out by the bookmaker will be 26 quid. 85% match on a £10 each way stake, you'd lose £3 if it didn't hit, you'd win 27 quid if it did. 90% match, £10 each way stake, 2 quid loss, qualifying loss if it didn't hit, £28 profit if it did. 92% 92 92 match on £10 each way, you're losing 160, you're gaining 28 40 95%, £10 each way, you're losing a pound. You're gaining £29 and a 97% match. £10 each way, you're losing 60p, whereas you'd win £29.40. So you can see on this slide here, what you probably notice, what's pretty obvious, is that the smaller the rating that you have, the larger the qualifying loss that you have, and the smaller the profit on the extra place. So you can see an 80% match on £10 each way, you'd lose four quid. Whereas on a 95% match, you'd only lose one quid on a £10 each way stake and you gain £29 of profit if it hit as opposed to £26 of profit if it hit on an 80% match. So it's, it's pretty, you don't have to be a genius to work that out. You know, qualifying losses are higher, the smaller the ratings, the profits are higher, the larger the ratings. It's not particularly confusing to work out. But if we look at each of the rows between the 80% match and the 97% match, so the rows within with the uh, qualifying loss and the profit, each of the rows between the qualifying loss of the profit on each match all tally up to £30. Pounds. So you can see 26 plus 4 is 30, 27 plus 3 is 30, 28 plus 2 is 30, 28.4 plus 1.6 is 30, 29 plus 1 is 30, 29.4 plus 0.6 is 30. So you can see all those profits tally up to £30. Pounds. And that is basically because the place odds on this runner, uh, 3.0, and you're betting £10 each way. The maximum is basically your each way stake times by the place on. So the max you can make is £30. And that £30 is split between the qualifying loss and the potential profit if the horse lands in the extra place. And the higher the rating, the larger the potential profit. The lower the rating, the smaller potential profit and higher the qualifying loss. So I'll show you a different example here. This one is called Almodovar del Rio. I think you pronounce that. Um, and this time, you know, you've got the same setup again. 80%, 85, 90, 92, 95, 97. 10 pound each way stake across all those ratings. And you can see the qualifying losses are exactly the same as, as before. They're exactly the same uh, loss as before on the previous example. The difference being the potential uh, extra place profits are much smaller. You can see £14 at an 80% match and £17.60 at a 97% match. So if I put those two examples side by side next to each other, that's you know pretty clear. You can see the qualifying losses are exactly the same on both the runners, despite the back odds being completely different. So the back odds on runner one are 11 and the place odds are three. 
and the back odds on runner two are five and the place odds are 1.8. The qualifying loss is remaining the same regardless of the back odds and you find that all throughout extra places on whatever odds runner you're getting on. The qualifying loss is always the same if you're on the same percentage match. The difference is the potential extra place profit. As I was explaining earlier, the potential extra place profit um, will be different because of the, the place odds that you're getting on. So the maximum profit you can make on this runner to the right with the shorter odds will be £18 on a £10 each way stake because that is the place odds. 10 times 1.8 equals 18. Whereas the maximum profit on this runner to the left prism will be £30 on a £10 each way because the place odds are 3.0. Um, so we're going to get into in, a, in just a little while which runners to target. Should you target higher odds runners where these numbers are much larger and they're much more enticing? Or should you go for runners which have smaller profits, but obviously the back odds and, and the place odds are much, much shorter to get on?